Welcome to the Lemon Tube Amiga Workbench Guides. This video was made possible by our sponsors on Patreon. If you'd like to support these videos, why not check out our Lemon Tube Amiga Club subscription page, where you'll find all the latest perks and freebies. In this part, we'll be checking out Amiga Copper Bars, and those are bars of colour which appear in the background of Workbench or in any of the windows or any of the borders and this archive hopefully will be linked in the description so the first thing I'm going to do is to copy the palette prefs to the pref directory the system sys in system drive and what that will do is copy some colours over onto our new workbench and that will set up some palette preferences for what I'm going to do next which is copy over into our home directory hopefully the disk icon which is included and the disk icon should be uh, 16 colours and so let's copy that onto DH0 and that will replace the disk icon on DH0 which is our files so if we reset that you can see that the machine's still in four color mode so what can we do about that we'll need to change that in the screen mode preferences all the way up and then we can see that that's now operating hopefully in 16 colors and if I fix the colors using this tool which I'll come back to hopefully it will put that into a compatible mode for the icon that I've just copied across you can see that's in 16 colors so getting back to the copper bars let's do a directory of the copper bars and you can see various tools here so let's start with the first one bars what does that do that puts a lot of black and blue bars in the background and changes the borders to white which is not very nice so if we type stripes again without anything attached to that that should reset the background and that gives you some idea of what copper bars are they're simply color bars move from one register to another in a gradient and we can set up the start and the end color so that those colors will move between one and the other in a gradient so you can see if we put in the question mark after the stripes tool that will give us a number of options and a number of switches that we can put on to the end of those prefixes or suffixes you can see that we can replace the borders or we can replace the text as well the text is actually blue and white and um, we can change the border so it's now black fading down to blue and we can change that using various preferences you can see that's built into the tool so that those bars really do fade into the background so that there isn't so much of a gap between one color and the next one so it bears some kind of messing around with tools like this in case you find something that you like and if you can't well you can always list out the help box again and try that all over again so this is a basic tool where we can change colors and sometimes if you change those to black it's very difficult to see anything at all let's check out another one and let's see what another one does let's check out well let's continue with the stripes actually and see if we can find something that's actually passable and usable on our Amiga setup surely something or other must be good well that's not too bad except it's pink that's not too bad except it's blue okay that's slightly better you can see copper bars in the background and that is an effect that we can have on our workbench and to save that from being a blank grey background and colours is another tool that I found by searching through loads of floppy disks colours will change all the colours to all of the colours that the Amiga can handle and you can see hardly any gap now between any of the colours and maybe 4096 colours I'm not quite sure but all of those are on the screen and I'm not sure how to exit this package either so 
let's check out another one and for this one I'm going to execute a script which is in here called lemon copper and that will execute that you can see I tried to get that looking a bit like the lemon ocean background on the lemon amiga website I've chosen completely the wrong colors it looks like purple going into blue but that was my attempt to try to get something similar Let's type out that script onto the screen and let's see I did it. I used the copper command and the copper with those things on the end to make sure that, that happened. And the Mr. Copper is another application where we can change with the top one through some pre-configured copper effects and some pre-configured colors. And you can see some kind of effect going on, maybe very few of these are actually practical but maybe you can spot one which actually is and so you can even change the colors the rgb values as well and you can even select those so i've selected brown it looks like and now red and green so you can select the top color and the bottom color using rgb values if you like and that will print some kind of a hex code on the screen so you can change that it's not absolutely perfect and the bottom one will change the mode so you can have window mode or background mode or you know text mode or anything like that and sometimes it's easy to mess things up when everything goes black so you can see mystic copper has a full range of effects so we can go back to our lemon copper background which really is a passable effect. Now we are moving into the prefs directory where we can see Mr. Copper is there, it's an icon, we can launch that and it doesn't really matter where you put that in Workbench, I've put it in prefs and you can also see WB Verlof or however you pronounce that, I think that's perhaps German, if you double click on that that should come up with the options and eventually can change the options to whatever we like for our, a number of preset configured ones already in here and those are fairly good and this requires the AGA chipset so you'll find a better gradient of copper without a single line of blend between them it's absolutely wonderful and this will only work in AGA and some of these I've actually added myself so you can mess around with this and you can change, if you go into the icon, which is the WB Verloff icon itself, not the document. If you go into the icon and go up to information, you can change all of these effects and you can change all of the parameters before it even loads. So you change the parameters in the icon, which is the .info file. So you can see I can also change the RGB values of the top top color and the bottom color as well or have that completely and utterly random I think some of these are slightly broken I think that one was supposed to be the lipstick file and you can save from within this tropical well you know it depends on your mood I guess and some of these are fairly fine you can see a blue one going into the Commodore grey and then grey going into blue is kind of a good effect or at least that's what I was going for when I put that one in that was an adaptation of the Jason one which is built in and Kevin I think I re redefined that but I quite like that because it's a nice blue shade and it touches off the icon that we've got already so I think for the rest of all of these guides let's leave that switched on so how do we install that onto our workbench you can see my workbench doesn't look very good with this color combination but we will be looking at installing some 16 color icons a bit later on so for now let's continue installing let's go back to this archive which I've called COP We're now copying the command 
WB Verl off to the WB startup sequence and let's not forget to copy the info file as well which has the configuration on it definitely need that and now that that's copied to the WB startup if we've got the advanced startup sequence running then that will rename that and make sure that that's running so that makes sure that, that loads up every time that our advanced WB startup is selected so what are we going to do now we're going to copy the force colors command or script or whatever it is and we're going to copy that to our workbench dh1 to be startup and we're also going to copy the custom palette which i think i used for this custom workbench icon you can see in the top corner we're going to copy that palette to our workbench to be startup and i think forest colors needs the palette so that's why we're copying them both in there and in the S directory, of course, we can edit that startup sequence. From here, if we're not running an AGA computer, then it will kick off in four color mode. So what we're going to do is to add another command, which is on my tools, hopefully, video, which is called add WB plane. So if we tap that in, add WB plane twice, that will double the four colors to eight, and that will double the eight to 16 colors. So that means even on a non-AJ Amiga, we can boot into 16 colors. We're now copying the add WB plane command into C on our workbench so that that can find it and it can execute that in our WB startup. So let's reset that machine and let's see what happens. Well, the good news is WB Verloaf is definitely loaded, but it's in the wrong colors. And the icon is not in the right colors. So somewhere along the line, we've messed this up. First thing we can do is go down back to the WB Verloff wherever we installed that and we can change the colors back to the one that we wanted. You can put on the random selection, we want to turn off the random selection so that it always selects the one that we want and then once we've selected the one that we want hopefully we'll remember to click on save and that will save all of our preferences to that package so that it won't select around one it will select this background every time returning back to that startup sequence we're going to add another line and that line is precisely the one that was the force colors command instead of trying to run that through the startup sequence we're going to put that in from workbench we're going to put that into the startup sequence itself remembering of course to put the full path in of the palette wherever we put that palette command and then hopefully once we exit that and reboot that should now reboot with the background and also the icon in all of the right colors so now we've got this running that's this part completed we've now completely gone into 16 color mode we've got a nice background as well mm -hmm. 